I'm going to show you how to customize your Z shell environment. Z shell is a shell for executing commands. It's similar to the bash shell and is used in Mac OS and Linux. First, we'll get started with how to check what shell you're currently using, how to check if your system has Z shell, and how to make Z shell your default shell. Then we'll look at setting up environment variables, creating aliases, and writing functions. Then we'll look at some advanced topics like switching between VI mode and Emacs mode key bindings, how to open an editor for long, complex, multi-line commands, and perhaps most importantly, how to customize your prompt. I'll demonstrate this on a Debian Linux server, our Dev Dungeon mainframe, that you can have access to if you become a Dev Dungeon member at my.devdungeon.com. Check what shell you're currently using by echoing the shell environment variable, that is echo dollar sign shell in all caps. Here we can see what shell I'm currently running. It prints the executable path. Check if the system has Z shell installed with which Z shell. Then check the version with Z shell dash dash version. You can also try cat slash etc slash shells to see what shells are available for everyone on the system. Change your default shell by running ch which stands for change shell, and then provide the path to Z shell. I'll use slash user slash bin slash zisha. The very first time you run zshell, it might ask you what you want to do about the config file. You can choose Q or option zero, so it won't create anything, and we'll talk about building one from scratch. Otherwise, you can start with the system default. Let's edit the zshell rc file. I'll vim dot zisha rc in my home directory. rc stands for runtime configuration. At this point, we should take a second to figure out where to go if we want to learn more and see what features are available and how to use them. Our first stop should be the man pages with man zisha. There's also a man page for the modules with man zisha modules. You can see some options on how to run zshell if you run zisha dash dash help. Next, you can refer to the official website and manual that'll always have the best documentation. You can also ask for help in the Dev Dungeon chat room. To learn more about getting your own chat account and becoming a member, visit my.devdungeon.com. Let's get back into editing our .zshellrc file. Here, we can add customizations that will load when our shell starts. For example, we can set our editor to vim by setting the editor and visual variables to vim, or your editor of choice. That's export editor equals vim, and export visual equals vim. Set any other environment variables you want here. You may have some environment variables you want to set for your development preferences. For example, if you're a Java user and you have a custom JDK path, you can specify that here too. Export Java underscore home equals home slash JDK 15, if that's where my JDK resides. Another example, if you're using Python and you want to set a directory where you can store your custom Python packages for import, you can set that here too. Export Python path equals home slash mypylibs. I don't actually need these, so I'm just going to comment them out. Setting aliases is another tool for convenience and saving time. You can create shortcuts for long commands. For example, alias ll equals ls dash lah. This will just let me use ll as a shortcut for the whole command. You can also alias a command to have some default parameters. For example, alias grep equals grep dash dash color equals auto. So then when you use grep, it'll automatically include the color option. Another one I like to make is alias zrc equals editor home slash dot zshellrc. This lets me just type zrc and I can edit my zshellrc file. This is convenient if you want to edit the file often. Functions are the next step up from aliases. You can accept inputs and reuse them and have multiple lines and they're a little more flexible and powerful than a simple alias. 
This is good for things that aren't worth creating a separate script for, but you just want to store in your Z shell RC file. For example, converting an MP3 audio file to an AUG Vorbis audio file. We can write a function that takes the input file name and the output file name and runs it through FFmpeg to convert the file format. I'll call it function mp3 to aug and we'll wrap the block in curly braces. Inside the block we'll write our code. In this case, ffmpeg dash i dollar sign one dollar sign two. The dollar sign one means the first argument passed to the function and the dollar sign two means the second argument passed to the function. Let's add a comment with example usage to save ourselves some headache in the future. mp3 to aug existing.mp3 new.aug. That's how you'd run it. You'd call the function and then pass it the first argument and then the second argument. By default, Z shell is usually in Emacs keybind mode. This means control P and control N will move up and down in your history like pressing the up and down arrows and control A and control E will jump to the front and the end of a line. These control key chords are Emacs style. You can also use VI key style, which means you have insert mode and you can type and then you press escape and you're in command mode and you can press J and K to go up in your history commands or modify your text. So you have the option between these two methods of modifying and entering your commands. To set the Emacs key binding, add bind key dash E. To set VI key bindings, add bind key dash V. Another thing you can do is open your text editor to craft a long command. First, we'll need to enable this feature with autoload-z edit command line. Then, zle-n edit command line. zle stands for Z shell line editor and dash n adds a new keybind. Next, we want to specify which keybind we want to use to open the editor. If you're using Emacs key bindings, you can set it like this. Bind key, open quotes, caret, capital X, caret, capital E, close quote, edit command line. This will set it so when you press control X and then control E, it will open your editor. You can set other key binds if you want. If you're using VI key bindings, you can set it like this. Bind key, dash M, VICMD, the letter V, edit command line. This will set so that the letter V on your keyboard is the keybind. You can press this letter V when you are in command mode, and then it will open your editor. Let me demonstrate this using the VI key bindings. If I start typing a command and then press escape to go into the VI command mode, I'll tap the letter V on my keyboard. This loads up my visual editor, the visual environment variable that I set earlier, my Z shell RC file. I set it to Vim. That's why it's using Vim. Now I can make a long, complex, multi-line command and just write the file and exit when I'm done. One of the last topics I want to touch on is customizing the prompt itself in Z shell. This is something you can go wild with. You can have a multi-line prompt with colors, return codes, timestamps, your git status, username, hostname, directory, with all kinds of colors and emojis and special characters if you want. Let's start, though, with the simplest thing we can do. Let's just make a bare prompt that has nothing in it but a couple angle brackets, and we'll build from there. Note that if you're editing an existing Z shell RC file, there may be other lines in there that call prompt init or prompt, and those may conflict with what you're trying to do here, so you may need to comment those out. Those commands are for using the prompt theme system, which is nice, but we're just going to do something simpler here. So in our Z shell RC file, let's simply write prompt equals, and then open some single quotes, and let's throw in a couple angle brackets. Then if I save the file and restart my shell, you'll see my new prompt. Let's add some more information to the prompt. I'll use my ZRC alias to get back to my Z shell RC file easily. Let's add some basic info like our username, host name, and our current directory. To add our username and host to the prompt, we can include percent %n for the username and percent %m for the host name. So we can say something like percent %n at percent %m. 
To include the current working directory, we can also include a percent tilde sign. This will represent the current working directory. So let's modify the prompt further to include colon and then the percent tilde. If you want to get a full list of all the variables you have available in the prompt, check out the Z shell documentation for prompt expansion at this URL. This is good, but they'll all be the same color and we can make them stand out more. We can add color to the prompt with percent %f and then putting the color name inside a pair of braces. Why don't we set the color to green before the username with percent capital F, open braces, green, close braces. And then before the host name, let's change the color again to cyan with percent %f, cyan. Then before the prompt ends, let's reset the color back to normal with percent lowercase f by itself. This will set the color to be nothing or white or gray, the default. Otherwise, when the user starts typing their command, they'll be typing in that color and it affects the rest of the terminal until color is changed again. Now, if I demonstrate what the prompt looks like by reloading my shell, we'll see some colors, the username, the host name, and the current directory. You can refine the colors and the spacing to suit your taste. Note, you can also set the background color and make text bold to stand out more. Refer back to the prompt expansion documentation I mentioned earlier for all the options. One nice thing about Z Shell is that it supports a prompt on the right side too. For example, if we set another variable here called rprompt, we can put text in it that'll show up on the right side of our terminal. I like to put the timestamp of when a command was run, as well as the return code from the previous command. We can do that with our prompt equals open some single quotes percent star percent question mark the percent star represents the time and the percent question mark represents the return code of the last command there are many other things you can do in the prompt like including the git status information but i won't cover all of that in this video you can find examples of all this in my z shell rc file that's available in the dev dungeon wiki here the last thing I want to talk about is Oh My Z Shell. This is a collection of community plugins and themes. There is a lot of useful stuff in there, but I want to warn you about using it. If you follow their installation instructions, it will link your Z Shell RC file to the GitHub repo and it'll periodically ask to pull in updates. To me, personally, this is pretty crazy an idea that you're just going to pull in shell code in hidden away plugins and run them in your, your shell. It's also possible that a plugin update can break your shell and leave you stranded. I don't know how much vetting the owner of the repository does regarding security concerns and potential backdoors in shell code, but personally, I'm not going to vet every update that comes in, so I wouldn't trust pulling it right into my shell. I do recommend, though, going through it and picking out the pieces you like, like finding a theme or finding plugins that are useful, but you should look through them because people may upload backdoors. It's not out of the realm of possibility. Well, that's everything I wanted to show you about customizing Z Shell. Hopefully this gives you enough of a foundation to dig in and start creating custom aliases, custom functions, and personalizing your prompt. Before you go, check out some of my products and services. Register and join our virtual hackerspace to get your own email account at devdungeon.com, a chat account, and SSH access to our Linux mainframe, which includes personal web space, Git storage, and other member-only perks. Join at my.devdungeon.com. Take my courses, working with binary data in Python 3, and deploy Django on Linux. Visit devdungeon.com slash courses. Buy my book, Security with Go. Visit devdungeon.com slash books. If you use Discord, Kathy is a fun chatbot for your server. Visit kathy.devdungeon.com. If you have a website, sign up with Apora to get notified if your site goes down. Visit apora.net. Bookmark devdungeon.com for reference and learning. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash devdungeon. Donate directly via PayPal at devdungeon.com slash donate.